Um, Mr. Jean Van de Poel, I hope I just mentioned it right. <laughs> Jean Van de Poel, okay? It's French, I don't know. Uh, I can't. We no, no. It's absolutely uh, Dutch, and it uh, it means John from the hill. So John. John oh, John from the hill. Oh, okay, you're John which from is, the hill. Which is which is strange because in the Netherlands we don't have any hills, so we're still checking <laughs> out where it's coming from. I love the Netherlands. I went to Vals. I stayed in Vals, which is the borders between Germany yeah. and uh, yeah Netherlands. I really loved it. You come from a very nice country. So, uh, Mr. Jean, you're going to be covering today how AI can drive organizational transformation four times smarter than humans can. So yeah. you're going to be sharing a presentation. The floor is yours. And uh, I'll come back to you when the question, when you're done for questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah. And of course, uh, the, the title um, makes you believe so. Uh, we don't need humans. No, um, AI can do it because it's the, color, uh, the collaboration together um, with humans. It's not either or. It's and, and. And what we saw this morning and also uh, yesterday is that... Uh, let me check. There are a lot of things that we need to do. I mean, we heard your presentation about how we get the customer to customer experience just now in medical digital transformation, innovation processes. If you listen to all these aspects, then you think like, okay, it's clear what we have to do. But the thing is that about digital transformation is that the digital thing is there. It's just that also the people have to do it eh, together. So things like uh, requirements, what do we really want with our digital transformation from our customer experience, getting people aligned. How are we going to do that? Then when we have created this new process, when we have been busy doing innovation, um, what's the expectation management? Is this really what we wanted? Uh, and then of course, when we are, you know, have decided to do certain things in a new certain way, it's not that automatically people do it. Yeah? There's something like adoption. So the green stuff, we heard a, a lot about it. and. That's, that all works. Eh? Technology listens. Uh, um, um, uh, consultants tell exactly what to do. The thing is, how can we get the people thing fixed? And that's where we uh, uh, focus on. And our company is called the Transparency Lab. And I want to share you a little bit of a research I did uh, for my PhD um, about uh, setting targets and about asking people. And I want to show you that when you use AI to work with input from people, that you can get to a lot of new insights, insights that you need to really do that transformation. Yeah, because the green part, that listens. The red elements, the red parts, they, yeah, if that sounds maybe too negative, they don't listen, they need to be taken along. And can we use technology to, in a way, help uh, uh, people change their behavior? That's basically where my slides are about. So, um, Basically, we have to ask people because when it's about process or culture or digital transformation, I cannot look up the situation in uh, uh, the corporate administrative, uh, the corporate administration, the corporate data warehouse. If I want to know how good are we in innovation, I have to ask people. And all of you have certainly used these kind of vendors that, well, um, you make a questionnaire, you send it out and then you get a photo. And of course, probably have to make the photo yourself because you have to work with Excel, but then at least you get a, a photo. And of course, that photo has scratches because the situation is never perfect. That's why you do such an inquiry, such a survey in the first place. Now, the thing is that if you apply AI, you can do much more than just a static photo. Actually, you can do a very detailed interactive scan, but you can also use AI to calculate smart targets and like the introduction said four times smarter than humans because you can suddenly factor in much more data that you need to set a smart target but once you have the target um, the journey doesn't stop because then ai can create dashboards with what to do how to do that who can help whom and not just for the organization but also for those 50 teams and also for these 3000 employees because Digital transformation usually involves uh, uh, economy. People are already getting excited. I understand. No. <laughs> so when you have an, an AI-driven target setting, then you can calculate dashboards because in digital transformation, everyone has to change it. Not something like doing technology. Everybody has to basically adjust their, their behavior. So dashboards can help to explain how to do that. 
Now, of course, with uh, uh, MS Office, how fantastic it, it, it might be, uh, you cannot uh, create suddenly uh, a thousand individual dashboards that would take you weeks, if not months, but AI can do that on the spot. So with AI, you can give everyone who needs to transform basically a sort of a mini toolkit, how to improve, how you can do that, uh, what colleague can help, etc. And I'll show you some examples in a second. But even if you give everyone such a, uh, a toolkit, then you're not sure whether they are using the toolkit. I can give you advice, but it doesn't mean that you listen. You could give me advice. Maybe I listen, maybe I don't. So what we can use AI for is to track whether people are basically using the advice, taking the toolkit that you gave them, and that they really start working. And of course, that's an indication for whether there's a, a true, real transformation going on on the work floor. Now, this sounds all nice, but you could say, wait a minute, so if I ask questions, I get all this. Well, it depends how you ask the questions. Because this kind of, uh, of questions you probably know, it's, it's not so much the, the topic here, but it's the format. This is what we call a Likert scale, you probably know this. And um, uh, um, what I think is good, Mustafa thinks is average, and Akavi thinks is horrible. Ah. Okay, so what do we mean with good? So certainly we don't know exactly where we are. So we probably have to have a sticky note session uh, together and with post-its and to understand what really was going on. But if you ask questions in a more objective way, then we're not asking for opinions. We are tallying the actual situation. How do you celebrate successes? Well, we don't. You know, when the opportunity arises. Or no, we make it a habit to celebrate successes with the whole team, not the same crew. And this is just an example. So when you ask the first question, we're good at celebrating successes, you ask for an opinion and you're looking back. What we do here with this uh, question format, we are basically objectively tallying where we are and we ask for ambition. What do you think, dear employee, dear manager, we should focus on, for instance, in the next half year? So that's important because now we can start to calculate with organizational alignment. Does the work floor want to go to the right and the managers to the left? Do we want all to go to the left on topic one, but we're totally divided in our ambition on topic two? So suddenly you can see that by asking such a seemingly simple question, that there are much more hidden calculations that you can do. Now, given the 15 minutes we have, uh, it's of course, uh, I also, uh, <laughs> Mustafa, we would like to have our own uh, uh, conference about it. But basically what we do is we start to calculate with these answers to look at three things. Is there organizational alignment for a target? And do we all want to go to the left or do we all want to go to the right? Is the amount of work not so much that we are totally overeating ourselves uh, in our enthusiasm? We really want to do things, and therefore we put our plates, yeah, we stuff our plates too full that we can handle. And is there capacity to change in the organization? Now, when you add it all up, you can give a verdict. If there's full support, the work is not too much, we use the full capacity to change that we have, five stars. But now comes uh, our PhD research. We looked at 70,000 people in 4,000 teams in 12 industries, in 32 countries, on five continents, how do they set targets? And it turns out that in 75% of these 4,000 teams, there were targets set that had a sort of an, an unfavorable combination, like there was too little alignment. Um, there was, you know, in all their enthusiasm, there was way too much effort planned. Um, the full capacity to change or people who could help with, uh, with knowledge sharing, for instance, was not used. So what we see is that if you do, you know, a manager with the best intentions, with the reports that there are, maybe, of course, some guts and some, some trial and error, then we still see that in 75% of teams, uh, there is not enough alignment, too much work, too little capacity to change. So yes, it's an interesting target, and it might have all the reasons to go for that target, but the consequences are very negative. So let's say only in 25%, there was the right blend of end 
enough alignment and not too much work and sufficient capacity to change. So in 25% of the cases. Now with AI, you can calculate as long, of very, it, it goes very quickly, but you can go through so many of millions of scenarios that you can immediately get to 100% of target setting, enough support, not enough or not too much work and uh, using all the capacity to change that there is in the organization. So from 25% smart targets, we jump to 100% smart targets. Now, of course, it's not AI that just decides this. Basically, you could say the people, the management, even the consultants, they basically determine the rules of the game. And what AI does is calculate then the best possible game. So if you change the rules, AI changes and calculates another target. But even if you give the rules, then AI calculates a four times better target. Now, that's all interesting, but what can you do with that? Because what we said about, okay, now I have this target. Jan, give me some extra stuff. What do you do? Well, therefore, we have this platform uh, called uh, Prioritize with AI. Um, is Once we have this target, what kind of things can we do with a dashboard? Well, this, for instance, uh, an example of a dashboard, very simple. But what you see is that, hey, a management summary is something that AI does. It can interpret what's going on and summarize that. That's something that you could do for headquarters, that's fine. But we were doing something for uh, an international company with 170 factories. Can I make 170 dashboards? Well, we can't. Can we interpret 170 dashboards? No, let AI do it. Because all those 170 factories, they have to change. All those 34 locations of that bank you are working in. Then it's not just uh, um, about the analysis. It's also about how to improve and how to realize it. And one of the examples of how to improve or uh, how to realize it is that we have um, 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 online uh, workshops. So let's say you have these 34 branch locations and you have defined a target, but because digital transformation is not something routine. So that means that uh, a manager might not feel totally confident to discuss this target that we have calculated um, with his or her team. So therefore, we don't want to, uh, let's say, uh, have uh, consultants go with uh, sticky notes, uh, with, uh, with post-it notes uh, to the, the 34 branch locations. We do this digitally. So we have um, do-it-yourself workshops that managers can do that don't take a whole afternoon. You can do that in 10, 15 minutes or blocks of 10, 15 minutes. And therefore, with the data of the team itself, the manager can now start to discuss uh, the priorities, or it can, uh, uh, or he or she can discuss how to improve the group's commitment to work on the improvement priorities. And then the moment that you discuss uh, uh, with the whole team, with the whole work floor, then we discovered in these 4,000 teams that everyone does something else right. And then it means that you can uh, save time by sharing knowledge. Let's say I am, you know, I'm very capable in setting objectives, but I don't know how to celebrate successes. Akawi, you are the person who knows everything about celebration of successes, but you're not so well versed in, in, in setting objectives. So, hey, we can help each other. And rather than I spent a whole morning trying to figure out how I celebrate successes, you can tell me in 50 minutes all your years of experience, the do's and the don'ts. So I save time, time that I can use otherwise and that's basically productivity so the more people you can connect the more people you can ask of course the more time you save the less reinventing of the wheel is happening so i could not calculate this uh, let's say in excel but we can calculate this with ai who can help whom and we see time and time and again that when we do this analysis that organizations realize that they were much richer than they thought they were because Everyone does something else right, which means that you just have to connect the dots. Now, and if we want to connect the dots, um, how do we do that on the work floor? There we have, you know, the most dots. So what AI can do is not just create a dashboard for these 170 factories or these 34 branch organizations. AI can also calculate a personal dashboard for every employee in real time. 
And here are just a few screenshots. Um, uh, it shows a benchmark. It also shows how to improve from one answer to the other uh, with, uh, with uh, additional content. And of course, you can imagine if we have a thousand people, then we have a thousand different starting situations because everyone does something else right and everyone does something else not so right. So we have a thousand different starting situations and we might have, let's say, three or four different uh, uh, maturity levels that people need to achieve. So you can imagine impossible for people, impossible for people with MS Office, but it's nothing. It's very easy with AI because that's what you see on the right one. It's knowledge sharing. Everyone does something else right. So click on a colleague and ask to share because if I'm asking someone to help me, that person will say, wait a minute, Jan van der Poel, Transparency Lab. Yeah, you can help me as well. So let's not just share knowledge. Let's exchange knowledge. And therefore, um, we can really permeate down to the level of the workflow. Because if I get a questionnaire so that management or consultants can do their job, you know, I'm not so involved. But if I answer a questionnaire and I get in 45 seconds my personal dashboard that saves me a lot of time now I understand the digital transformation that's also there's also something in it for me apparently I'm the only one who is the star on question 12 okay my 15 minutes of fame so suddenly changing is not so difficult is not so uh, frightening it doesn't need to be anonymous because we put everyone in the limelight, everyone their 15 minutes of fame because we have to transform, you know, as an entire organization. Now, um, if you want to read more about it, uh, we have a magazine called Amaze, uh, again with AI, and that has a lot of interesting articles about how AI is changing the way we are changing organizations. Um, but it's also the way um, how consultants can change the way in which they serve customers. And um, the question was, uh, you know, I had examples about uh, uh, celebrating successes. So people sometimes say, ah, so this is about organizational effectiveness. No, everything that you saw here, the knowledge sharing, the target setting, uh, the workshops, the individual dashboards, they can be done for a lot of topics. So here you have uh, uh, 160 topics that we have done with uh, over a thousand clients in the last few years. But what you see is that the moment that you make stuff where you cannot find the answer visible, eh, where you cannot find the answer in the corporate data warehouse, the moment that you ask that in a verifiable way, eh, like the different, uh, uh, what was it? These two uh, situations, you know, if, if you ask the questions, the soft stuff in the right way, you can obje uh, objectify it, and then you can do all kinds of wizardry with artificial intelligence. And that, Akawi, concludes my presentation. I just uh, have a question. How important is the credibility and validity of data for implementing uh, an AI-based system with an organization? What a super good question. The whole thing is that um, what happens is that AI runs uh, very well if you give it good fuel. So okay. opinions is bad fuel. Because like I said, what I think is good that Zena thinks it's average or mediocre and Mustafa thinks it's horrible. So what is it? The moment that you have objective tallying, then you have fantastic fuel for algorithms. So things mm. go very smooth and fast. So if you can get the statistics out and the AI in, that's basically my uh, uh, advice. Okay. 